Uh, the agreement of raw materials between Ukraine and EU was uh, set uh, like in the summer previous year. So what uh, you succeed to do for that time before the war started? I have to say that we had really good foresight to start to work on critical raw materials even before we had the slightest idea that uh, the Russia's war could be started on European soil and in Ukraine. And uh, I have to say that uh, the Ukrainian uh, government and Ukrainian people got a lot of admiration for the fact that despite uh, the um, uh, military actions uh, that actually uh, we are still uh, focused on uh, close cooperation with the European Union that, as it was uh, said in the conference, your government is functioning despite the very difficult uh, uh, circumstances and that we are actually delivering on the plan which we agreed together with Prime Minister Shmihal when I, when I visited uh, uh, Ukraine uh, on the summer uh, before the war. We agreed on a roadmap, which means it's actually a set of actions, set of set of goals. Uh, one of them uh, was the signature of the memorandum of today that uh, we will help Ukraine to develop your geological data in a digital form. So every investor in the world could see uh, what Ukraine has on offer, what kind of business uh, projects you have in Ukraine, and, and simply to, uh, to mobilize further investors' interest uh, in Ukraine. We've been also discussing concrete projects uh, how to develop uh, the Ukrainian uh, source materials, as uh, my colleagues uh, from uh, the uh, European Bank for Reconstruction and Development said that uh, we want Ukraine to become a resource superpower. But I know that what is important for you is not only to extract uh, the, the, the uh, raw materials in Ukraine, you want to add value edits, you want to be part of the European economy, you want to be active on European on the European single market. And this is very much uh, appreciated and therefore we agreed uh, with the Prime Minister at that time and we are accomplishing it today that on top of the, let's say, government to government uh, uh, cooperation, we are also working very closely with investors, with uh, uh, business stakeholders and the fact that today we have more than 200 companies present here in, uh, in Brussels discussing project developments in Ukraine is quite significant and we want to continue in the same way and discussing what should be the priority actions for next year and there afterwards and we of course hope that it would be already uh, a huge effort to reconstruct free and uh, liberated Ukraine. You absolutely rightly mentioned that uh, uh, Ukraine is also interested uh, in processing the raw materials, not just uh, supplying it to EU. I know that uh, before you signed uh, the approximately the same agreement with Kazakhstan on uh, the raw materials, so that uh, what kind of plans and projects we have to create such kind of uh, pr proceeding yeah. facilities inside Ukraine? First and foremost, I think what is very important is what we call regulatory cooperation. What we mean by that is that your raw materials would be the uh, most sustainable in the world. So it means that they would be extracted uh, with low carbon fruit, uh, footprint uh, according to the, to the highest environmental standards uh, because I'm sure that all, development, all developed countries uh, in the world would like to show that when they are building the car, for example, that the car is built from sustainable steel with the sustainable raw materials, that uh, the CO2 emissions when producing the steel or batteries been pushed to the, to the lowest possible level. And uh, therefore, we very much appreciate the close cooperation with Minister Strilets because he's introducing already now uh, the modern European norms into your legal order to make sure that once you extract the critical raw materials, once you process them, once you refine them, that it will be done uh, according to the, uh, to the highest standards so the raw materials would be of high demand on the global market. Such kind of cooperations demand uh, what we call stability of uh, supply chain. In the conditions of the war, how real is it to uh, maintain that kind of stability? I think that uh, everybody is uh, full of admiration how you can uh, operate uh, under the difficult circumstances and under the pressure, uh, under the pressure of war. And uh, uh, as you have seen, uh, the European Bank for uh, Reconstruction and Development is already executing uh, the, uh, many of the projects right now. They're mostly focused on 
helping Ukraine uh, to renovate uh, the bomb infrastructure in electricity, in waterworks, but also in um, the projects like digitalizing uh, of, the, of the raw materials. And we also agreed with the Prime Minister and the ministers that uh, already right now we need to work on something like pre preparation for investments coming uh, into your economy and I was discussing in particular uh, the critical raw materials area. Uh, you have uh, 22 of uh, 30 critical raw materials on our priority list. You have more than uh, 100 of the critical raw materials sold uh, worldwide and we want to work in the, we want to develop it in a close partnership with uh, uh, Ukraine and I think more prepared we are then the faster we can run when the peace is established in Ukraine and, and once we can focus our efforts on uh, reconstruction and on the projects which will bring you, uh, Ukraine into the European Union. Uh, according to the movement to the Grand Green Deal, it looks like we come into the new era of raw materials, which could be compared with the era of oil and gas, for, for instance. Do you predict uh, that there will be some kind of uh, strengthening of the global co uh, competition for that raw materials and uh, could it be the source of uh, international instability? instability? As I said that we have to learn from the mistakes in the past and one of our mistakes was that we became too dependent on the fossil fuel supplies from Russia and we shouldn't repeat the same mistake with the critical raw materials and today there are uh, certain uh, critical raw materials where we are overly dependent on one country or one supplier and therefore uh, what we are uh, working very hard on right now is how to diversify the, the critical raw materials uh, uh, supplies, how to develop the close partnership uh, with uh, our friends because we want to avoid the situation uh, where, as it happened with energy, also raw materials could be kind of weaponized. We want to make sure that uh, uh, we learn from, I would say, the dangers and costs of uh, over-dependencies, which we are now going through right now with the biggest uh, energy crisis in Europe since the Second World War, and to make sure that if it comes to the critical raw materials, we will, we will be much better uh, in uh, our preparation and addressing this issue. Uh, Ukraine is clearly one of the superpower, superpower if it comes uh, to the graphite supplies. Uh, with the Prime Minister I visited uh, uh, titanium mines. I know that you have uh, huge resources of uh, lithium and I can go on and on. So we have a lot of, of these critical raw materials. But what is very important is not only to extract them, but to have also, for example, refineries. Because, because if it comes to the lithium, uh, you, kind of, you can mine it, but to use it for the batteries you have to have a chemical plant to process it for the materials which could be used in the batteries. And this is actually where a lot of energy is spent, where a lot of know-how is invested, and this is what makes different if the material is low carbon, it means uh, uh, the least possible amount of uh, CO2 is used for producing these uh, materials or not. And therefore I think it's very important what we do with the Ukraine right now, that we are not only focusing on how to extract these materials, but to make it in a sustainable, environmental friendly way that uh, your raw materials will be competitive and, and of course widely accepted uh, on the European single market. We are, we are prepared to work with Ukraine on the whole value chain. So first you have uh, uh, first you have extraction, then you have refining, I would say this chemical process, and I think what is uh, very important for su sustainability, this is also recycling. Just to give you, I would say, the, the example, uh, uh, what I hear often, that if you would collect all the used uh, cell phones, which you have somewhere at home in our drawers because they're not good anymore, so we can, we can use that material and make uh, batteries for 4 million electric vehicles. So that's the power of recycling, and, uh, and, and therefore I'm sure that uh, Ukraine uh, could be a very important player also on uh, the recycling front. So you have all the preconditions uh, to cover the whole value chain from extraction to recycling, processing and build the value added uh, and become as uh, Vice President of EBRD set uh, source superpower of the world. Over there, over there, over there.